Good afternoon, PSQ Nation! Welcome to the ninth webinar session organized by the Philippine Society for Equality. Again, we are live via Facebook and YouTube. How are you, PSQ Nation? Hope everything is doing well with you. Happy Friday, everyone! I hope that all of you and your family members are safe watching this complimentary webinar. Are you enthusiastic on today's session? Please type in the comment box yes if you are looking forward to learning about the latest developments on food science, technology, and quality. So may I see your yeses if you are truly excited. Hi, good afternoon, Doc Naro. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Friday. Hi, Sir Muhammad. Greetings to you, to PSQ and everyone from University of Malaysia, Perlis. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, Sir, uh, Mom Cecil Santiago, Mom Pamela Jane. We also have Mom Camila. Hi, good afternoon, Gabby Imperial. Hi, Ira. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Friday. Hi, Hill. Yes, thank you so much for attending this exciting event. So prior to learning this presentation, please watch this video about the Philippine Society for Quality, the event that is very forthcoming that is forthcoming this October. We are all excited to see you this October 15 for the National Quality Forum. But this afternoon, we are very lucky to have an expert to discuss the topic on advancement and recent trends on food science, technology, and quality. I'm very humbled to present to you our resource speaker. He studied food science at Queen's University, Belfast, and has enjoyed an 18th 18-year career with Kerry across various roles and markets. Currently, he is the vice president of the said company. He is a purpose-driven business leader and is passionate about enabling teams to deliver their goals and fulfill their potential. He is married to his wife, Oxana, and they have an eight-year-old son named George. In his downtime, he enjoys taking part in all watching various sports such as football and any motor sports. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Mervyn Guribin. A virtual applause to our resource speaker for this afternoon. Hi. Hi, Mervyn. How are you? Hello, I'm good. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. And thanks for the opportunity to speak to you today. A special thanks to, uh, to Jocelyn from URC and Dr. Naro for the, the kind invitation. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Mervyn. The floor is yours. Thank you. So look, when, when thinking about quality, I suppose it can be defined and measured in, in different ways. But inherently, it's related to value. And I'm going to talk you through today how my company, Kerry, creates value in a competitive and dynamic food and beverage industry. The title of the presentation captures our vision and what drives us at Kerry to be our customer's most valued partner, creating a world of sustainable nutrition. This presentation explains exactly what we mean by this and more importantly shows you how we are doing this with our customers in all regions across the world. Our purpose, inspiring food and nourishing life. Inspiring food is about innovation, which is at the core of Kerry, where we help to create better tasting, better for you, better performing products with more impact. And nourishing life is about sustainability, which has always been a key strength of ours as a from food for food company. But we, what we are really seeing on sustainability with our customers, driven by their consumers, is just how much of an important role we can play and we are playing right now in meeting these needs. The presentation shows you a number of really exciting examples of products that can capture how Kerry are working from ideation through to launch and now beyond this right through to impact. So what I will cover today is an overview of our company, some of the market and industry dynamics, how we are addressing the key area of sustainability a key feature in quality moving forward. And then we will have some closing takeaways. 
We are a truly global business with an extensive footprint that enables us to partner with our customers to meet local consumer needs. We have a group revenue of 7 billion euro, EBITDA of 1 billion and trading profit of 800 million euro. We manufacture in 149 facilities across 31 different countries with sales in more than 150 countries. And you can see from a divisional perspective, taste and nutrition accounts for more than 80% of our turnover. Our global B2B taste and nutrition business have a has a revenue of just under 6 billion euro across the Americas, Europe, and APMEA. What's key for us is our consumer-led approach. And this is the primary lens by which we set our strategy, manage our business with eight end-use markets across food, beverage, and pharma. This means we are looking at the market in the same way as our customers. We are talking the same language and enabling more value-add partnerships. Our breadth of expertise right, right across these end-use markets has been a key driver of our growth and business development in recent years, helping customers broaden their ranges, move into new categories, and launch in new markets, all in a very fast and more sustainable way. We have built up our capability and technology right across taste and nutrition over the past 25 years. You will see the depth and breadth of technology in more detail in a moment, but what we have seen from integrating these technologies over the past couple of decades is that it is one of the industry's biggest challenges. And we believe we have mastered that challenge. When it comes to sustainability, we've invested and built out our capability over a number of years as part of our integrated approach. As global food production is responsible for almost 25% of all greenhouse gas emissions and 70% of all fresh water usage, sustainability has now moved up alongside taste and nutrition in importance for our customers and their consumers. This extra layer of complexity is the most exciting industry development. It has given our customers the opportunity to see the full extent of the value Kerry can create for them. Now moving to the value add staircase, which we have been using for some time, as it gives a really clear picture of where our sector is moving. What integrated solution means for Kerry? It's all about the value add we create for our customers. Adding value through improving taste, improving nutrition, improving efficiency, removing complexity from operations, and improving speed to market, while also helping our customers to meet their own sustainability goals. This is how we continue to move the game on and continue to lead the way. We spoke earlier about our vision, creating a world of sustainable nutrition, and how we can explain, and now we can explain how we're going to do this. It's not something any company can do alone. We'll do this by meeting our own commitments and by working with our customers to help them move along the sustainable nutrition spectrum. Enabling our customers to move along the sustainable nutrition spectrum means two things. One, it means enhancing the nutritional profile of their products. And two, it means improving the environmental and social impact. Our breadth and depth of capability right across the food and beverage categories means we have been enhancing the nutritional profile of our customers' products for decades. Be it reduced fat, salt, sugar, cleaner labels, adding clinically validated functional benefits to food, such as enhanced immunity, or with our range of probiotics or other health ingredients. And we are going to combine this with improving the sustainability impact of our customers' products by reducing carbon emissions, food waste, or water usage. And by having a better social impact, by giving cost consumers trust and full transparency on their products from farm to fork. These are just a few ways in which Kerry are working with our customers on this journey. We are helping our customers to achieve their sustainable nutrition goals 
and the impact currently Kerry is currently having and will continue to have on the planet. Market and industry dynamics. This section focuses on the and consumer and our customers evolving needs for co-creation and how our business model and technology strategy are addressing this growing opportunity. Our markets have evolved significantly over the last five years, where we have seen profound changes led by millennials and younger consumers. This has meant an increased appetite for new experiences, a greater awareness of how food and beverages are made, and what companies that produce them stand for. This is what we at Kerry call the and consumer. These and consumers are demanding products that taste great, delivering authentic multisensorial new taste experiences and are more healthy and nutritious with reduced ingredients of concern and more functional health benefits. Products that are made with trusted ingredients and are locally sourced. Made for me and personalization is important. Consumers want products that are Instagrammable, enabling them to share their food and beverage experiences. And what is now elevated to become the leading primary driver of purchasing decisions for consumers is purpose and sustainability. Consumers across the world are seeking food and beverages that meet all of their needs. This and consumer is leading to, co to customers requiring much more from their supply base. What customers need more and more is the and partner who can co-create consumer and customer relevant integrated solutions. So what does it mean to be a co-creation partner providing a total customer offering? This includes collaborating with and supporting customers in a variety of different ways. Having proprietary consumer insight capabilities that enables proactive engagement and ideation at the commencement of a new product innovation. Customers want partners that can support them in a holistic way from ideation to launch to impact, helping them to move into new categories or sub-channels and enabling them to do all these activities quicker and having the expertise to help them to deliver efficiencies by having an in-depth knowledge of the activities performed along the end-to-end -end supply chain. Delivering on all these aspects is what it means to be a true co-creation partner. Kerry's business model is centered around our customers and what we can do for them. There are some key elements that make it truly unique. Starting on the left, our business model has a broad foundation of core technologies right across both taste and nutrition. In the center, our value creation engine has three core elements which work together to support our customers. This comprises firstly of culinary and insights where we have over 100 chefs and baristas and proprietary consumer insight tools like Kerry Trendspotting. Secondly, our development and applications experts who ensure products meet customers exact needs by using Kerry's sensory, analytical and regulatory expertise. And thirdly, our product process technologies where we have consumer leading process expertise across 25 different platforms delivering both innovation and efficiencies for our customers. This value creation engine built on the foundation of our taste and nutrition technology capabilities makes us unique to our customers. So if you're a global, regional or local customer, or whether you're in the retail or food service channel, Kerry has the business model to support you. Our technology strategy is based on three things breadth of capabilities, depth and expertise within each of these categories, and critically, the integration of these technology capabilities to deliver unique and value-added solutions for our customers. 
starting with our core technologies spanning across both taste and nutrition. In taste, we have a range of flavor capabilities, natural extracts, and modulation. In nutrition, our technologies include our broad protein range, probiotics and enzymes, to name just a few. We combine these individual technologies with our extensive process technology expertise, spanning from pyrolysis to extrusion to fermentation. We deploy these two elements to create another la layer of technology, which we call integrated technologies that are more customized to specific end use markets and consumer demands. And then critically, all of these capabilities are leveraged by our teams to create unique integrated solutions for our customer that are defined and aligned to consumer needs and bespoke customer requirements. This is at the core of our unique taste and nutrition positioning and where we excel as the co-creation partner for our customers. It is the culmination of decades of research, development, and investments in our broad technology platform, and that is why we are the industry leader in integrated solutions. Moving to sustainability. This section explains Kerry's track record and partnerships, our sustainability strategy, our big goal and our commitments, and examples of how we are enabling our customers to achieve their goals and meet evolving consumer demands. This slide gives you a feel for the breadth of our partnerships right across the value chain, our impact and our ESG performance. Firstly, on our partnerships, we partner with international value chain alliances and coalitions of action with measurable objectives and impact. Examples of our partnerships that drive social impact are the World Food Programme and Concern Worldwide, as they connect with our vision of creating a world of sustainable nutrition. We have strong ESG credentials. We are committed to science-based targets. We are members of RE100, and we'll have 100% renewable electricity across all our operations in the next two to three years. We engage with leading rating agencies and assessment bodies, and as part of our Beyond the Horizon strategy, we will increase both our impact and our ESG performance. Moving to our sustainability strategy beyond the horizon. Our framework is centered around innovation enabling sustainable nutrition. There are three pillars to this. Firstly, we are going to continue to partner with our customers to deliver more impactful innovation. Secondly, our 2030 sustainability commitments. In the past 10 years, we have reduced our absolute carbon emissions in our operations by almost 30%, and we're going to be net zero before 2050. We have targeted action plans to deliver on all of our commitments, and we feel very confident that we will meet these targets and accelerate our impact. The combination of achieving these targets in conjunction with our innovation will mean a better impact for our customers, people, and society and planet. We have set ourselves a big ambitious goal to reach 2 billion people with sustainable nutrition by 2030. To me, this is really exciting as it highlights just how Kerry's growth strategy, innovation strategy, and sustainability strategy are all integrated. We're going to achieve our vision, creating a world of sustainability, creating a world of sustainable nutrition by working with our customers on nutrition and on the environmental and social impacts. Some more detail. On the nutrition journey, COVID-19 
has highlighted the importance of food safety and security. Consumers are aware that disruption from climate change or from biodiversity loss would be much greater. Positive and balanced nutrition means providing the same great taste while optimizing the nutritional profile. And personalized nutrition means food for me, meeting my needs for my genotype, my phenotype, my microbiome, and adapted to my lifestyle goals. On the environmental and social impacts, in the next decade, we will drive regenerative agriculture, which includes biodiversity and preservation by making sure we use best in class processes. We can both produce more food with less CO2, water and protecting biodiversity. And also circular solutions, which means creating solutions that are inherently sustainable. Today, more than 90% of all goods that are produced are linear. And every day, 30% of food is wasted. So upcycling food byproducts is critical to the future of our industry, the future of society, and the future of consumers. This is the journey we are on with our customers, and we are going to take the world with us on this journey. Now a few examples of exactly what we mean. Everyone knows the context of this slide as COVID-19 has meant a heightened consumer demand for immune health. Our customer wanted end-to-end -end support right across the process and wanted to launch this product to a market in record speed. We utilized our dry beverage expertise, our clinically proven well immune immunity enhancing technology, our natural extracts and taste applications to deliver this integrated solution. Now, oh, sorry, let me go back. Now the impact. Our solution delivers better nutrition with immunity benefits, consumer preferred taste and the clean label. And it delivers a better impact, impact for the planet, coming with 10% less carbon emissions and significant water savings. This product was launched with the retailer in stores right across America and is performing really strongly. Next is a great example of Kerry's expertise in the area of plant protein. Our customer is a digitally marketed plant protein challenger brand in Europe. Key to their offering is doing better for the planet. They want optimized nutrition by reducing both fat and salt. They want an improved taste profile they want a reduced environmental impact, and they want to put these claims on the front of their pack, as you can see from their Nutri-Score rating and their low carbon logo. We used our meat applications and plant protein expertise, our clean label portfolio and our taste applications to deliver our co the customer the solution to meet all of these demands. It is an exa excellent example of the power of Kerry's radical offering. Next, the impact. Radical delivers improved nutrition with up to 87% less fat saturated fat versus meat, along with improved taste, texture, and a cleaner label. It delivers a better impact for the planet with up to 87% less carbon emissions. This customer is now working with us right across their range of plant protein products. This example is a customer looking to extend their range in the low and no alcohol category, while also looking for improved efficiencies and yields. Kerry is, has used its brewing ingredients and applications expertise combined with our enzymes, process technology know-how to deliver a technology solution for our customer. The impact delivering a range of products with low alcohol and low, lower calories. This is a new beer with the same great authentic taste. And the improved process is better for the planet, delivering up to 41% reduction in carbon emissions and a $2 per hectolitre saving with reduced waste, energy, and water usage. So just a few closing takeaways. 
Firstly, innovation. A number of exciting examples of what it means to be a true, a true co-creation partner and how we continue to innovate in a virtual world. Integrated solutions. We are leading the way, integrating our technologies across both taste and nutrition. Our unique business model is centered around our customers and how we can truly add value for them. And sustainable nutrition, how we work with our customers from ideation to launch right through to impact and how we're going to achieve our vision of becoming our customer's most valued partner, creating a world of sustainable nutrition. So thank you for your time today. I hope you learned something uh, and I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you so much, Mervyn, for that very comprehensive presentation. Yeah, I subscribe to you. I subscribe when you said that, yes, indeed, COVID-19, this emergency really, together with its uh, consequent uh, uh, social distancing ruling, these really have caused major disruptions on our daily food related practices. And yeah, yes, this outbreak also, I think this outbreak also offered uh, the opportunity for us to reflect on the importance of sustainable and healthy diet and come to realize good nutrition is really a precondition for a health and productive life and i admire i admire carrie congratulations to carrie for carrying that task no? to building uh, as you have said in your vision building uh, creating a world of sustainable nutrition and this i know this is a complex task and thank you very much to carrie thank you congratulations thank you very much <laughs> Now, at this juncture, our participants are watching via Facebook and YouTube. They can now ask questions. They can share their key takeaways. I'll be reading some of them and uh, feel free to answer those questions or inquiries by our PSQ Nation. Okay, can we read some of them? Hi, Grizel. Hi, Joy. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, John and Eliza. Good afternoon to all our viewers from Facebook and YouTube. I hope you got a lot of uh, key takeaways from the very comprehensive presentation of our resource person for this afternoon. So, Mervyn, this uh, this project, this uh, improving nutrition. This, I hope, I hope you uh, agree with me that this really requires uh, multi-sectoral policies and strategies. You know, uh, all different sectors have to work together to ensure that the entire country or the entire world would really uh, meet that desire or meet that objective of having a sustainable nutrition. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, no, no one person, no one company can do it all themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's by collaborating, partnering, sharing information, mm -hmm. sharing practices, learning, and creating ultimately better quality outcomes, better quality products, better mm -hmm. process. That's what's going to make the difference. Um, mm -hmm. And everyone can play a part, and uh, no matter how small, it all adds yes. up and, and makes a difference. <laughs> overall. I agree, I agree. So all of this should be, we all have to support one another. And there should be an effective coordination and accountability mechanisms for this to be, uh, for this to be effective, and for the, for us to fulfill our desired goal of having a sustainable nutrition country or in the sustainable nutrition world. Correct. Because there are there are different there are a lot of factors interplaying within this area. Uh, aside from what you have mentioned, your climate positive social impact, and within the nutrition itself, there are a lot of interplaying factors. So it's indeed very complex, but I think this is manageable if we work hand in hand. Great. We have a question, I think. Yes, we have one from Muhammad. Hi, Muhammad. Thank you for the great presentation. I have one question. Could you please explain supply chain management to produce quality product? Wow, I wish I knew. I wish I had all the answers to supply chain management because it's a bit tricky at the moment. I'm sure everybody who is uh, trying to ship 
um, things around the world today is experiencing the, the huge problems which are happening uh, in global shipping um, right across the world. It's, uh, it's unprecedented. Um, in terms of producing quality product, what we have found is that, that we have invested quite a lot, as, as I explained in the presentation, in local manufacturing. So trying to be trying to um, source products and create uh, solutions and products closer to the marketplace, closer to our customers, is really a strategy that we have followed. It, it requires us to invest maybe a little bit ahead of the game um, in order, you know, I mean, uh, not everywhere that we invest has scale at the moment, but we have to look ahead and we have to predict what is going to happen in the future. Um, as best we can, and we have to prepare for that. And so we have invested in manufacturing locations right across the world. We continue to invest in particular in developing markets where we, we uh, are betting on the future and consumer growth and the growth of spending power in the middle classes to drive value for us long term. So, so my, uh, my response to that would be really localization and getting closer to the source is ultimately uh, the best thing to do. Thank you so much for that question. Another another inquiry from Sir uh, Sir J. Chris Faboso. How did Kerry adopt in terms of management system practices during this pandemic? Okay, that's a it's quite a big question to uh, to ask. Uh, there's many different things that we did. Um, I suppose the first thing that we did was the first thing that we noticed or the first impact really was that of course borders closed and and we couldn't travel we couldn't go around so there was there was no option but to to deploy digital tools okay so you have to get comfortable with working with people virtually you have to get comfortable with uh with sharing information virtually and meeting customers virtually and meeting your teams virtually and trying to create a rapport and a relationship through a screen, which is really, really difficult. Um, but I think we mastered it uh, reasonably well. The second point is that when you can't be there and you you can't actually go and physically look at a situation or, or a scenario that's happening, there's a huge amount of trust then which is needed for your teams locally. And one of the huge uh, things that we in Kerry seen was actually we measure our uh, engagement uh, we, we have an engagement survey and we measure our engagement on a, on a regular basis. And our engagement with our teams actually increased during, uh, during COVID-19. And that's really because our teams were much more empowered. They were much more able to make decisions faster, decisions that were locally relevant. Uh, and we really empowered our teams to, um, to get on with the job and to do the right thing in order to serve our customers in the best possible way. Wow, those approaches are amazing. Another question from Doc Nairo, taking the perspective of uh, carbon footprint reduction, what is the level of involvement of Kerry in the breeding of plants and animals to be used in the production of their products? Okay, so that, that depends, uh, to be honest. Um, if you take dairy, for example, we have um, in Ireland, we have over 3,000 farmers, suppliers, uh, into our milk uh, or dairy business in Ireland. Uh, and we have this, actually a division set up which actually helps those farmers with best practice in farming, increasing yields, animal husbandry, animal nutrition, and so on. So we would be very, very close to it. Um, other areas then, so things like vanilla, uh, such as vanilla from Madagascar, where we partner with the with farming programs in Madagascar, to improve the lives of the of the farmers there, to uh, to give opportunities for for um, their children to go to school, um, these are things which we work with uh, hand in hand. We have an initiative in uh, in Latin America where we have sent uh, some of our farmers to Latin America to share best practice with them down there to help to help increase milk yields and to look at the uh, the, the production of of milk and, and dairy products in Latin America. Um, we work with growers in Florida for citrus. So our citrus uh, products coming out, of, uh, coming out of our business in North America, we work very closely with our supply base there. 
So it really depends. We do everything we can to help um, back towards the primary side of our business because the more we the more we invest in that, the more sustainable it will be, uh, and the better it will be for the long term future of, of the planet and indeed for for our business. All right. Another from Cecil Santiago. I like your company's goal, sustainable nutrition. May I know your target carbon emission reduction for a sustainable nutrition? Okay, it's all laid out. Uh, we have a, a document which is, is laid out our sustainability strategy. It is called Beyond the Horizon. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me just see if I can get a link for it here. Uh, maybe not. Um, but I can post a link for it. Um, I can't remember, or just off the top of my head, the exact carbon emission uh, reduction which we have. I'll have to get it for you. But we have laid out commitments for uh, CO2 for water and electricity um, right across our business. And we have very strong plans in place to reduce uh, our, our uh, impact on the world in that sense. One of our first net carbon zero plants is actually going to be in Southeast Asia. It's actually going to be in the Philippines. And we're hoping that uh, towards the end of this year, our plant in Batangas will be um, very close to net zero, so. That's great. Do we have other questions for Murphy? There is a question there about actions to reduce uh, carbon emissions during the production process. Look, there's no, there's no one thing. Um, I guess it's looking at it end to end. We have, um, we have obviously um, moved to more sustainable energy sources. That's a, a huge part of it. And also looking back into our, our energy suppliers and, and looking at where we can actually source uh, Clean label or clean, clean, uh, clean energy as opposed to energy from fossil fuels. That's one reason. Then, obviously, investing in our plants and um, so upgrading our equipment to more energy efficient uh, methods is another way. Um, locally sourcing products is a huge part of what we want to do. So, getting closer to uh, raw material sources and then getting closer to our customers so that we can reduce the CO two that comes from the supply chain uh, is another angle. So there's many, many different, um, different ways. Then we also have products, um, like for example, sugar. Sugar is a big uh, user of, of water and CO2. Uh, we have technologies which can reduce, uh, you can reduce the sugar while retaining sweetness. Um, and that indeed, you know, not only reduces cost, but it also reduces the impact of CO2 and water usage on our customers' products as well. All right. Thank you so much, Mervin, for that. No problem. Okay, let's wait for more questions from our viewers via Facebook and YouTube. This is a very short presentation and yet very, uh, very comprehensive. And we are learning a lot about uh, about your your about Carrie's approaches. And thank you also from Cecil. Another question from her. So your company is not using fossil fuel technology. We do. Uh, we do. Of course, um, it's not possible to have uh, non-fossil fuel technology such as wind or, or, or hydrogen or anything like that everywhere. So it's about, it's about that shift. Um, and there are ways in which you can work with energy providers to make that shift happen quicker. So we are working with our energy providers to say, how can we move to more uh, cleaner technology uh, fuel uh, moving forward? So it's a journey. Um, we've laid this out right up until, uh, we've got granular goals out up until 2030, and we've laid it out uh, right up until 2050. All right. Thank you so much once again, Mervin. Since we don't have any, do we have other questions from our Facebook viewers and you too? Mom Cecil said, thank you so much for sharing. No problems. 
And Sir Jamie also has another question. What are the most pressing quality issues that Kerry faced during this pandemic? Wow, that's a pretty broad question as well. So quality issues that we faced, multiple, multiple ones. I think the biggest one that we faced was ensuring the safety of our people um, initially. And, you know, I suppose at the start, nobody really understood what, what COVID-19 was. No one understood the long-term impacts of it. Thankfully, now we've learned a bit more about the virus. We've learned uh, and continue to learn about how we can control it. But, but in terms of quality and the safeguarding of our people, that was our initial first concern. And so obviously there was things like, you know, PPE, um, distancing and, uh, and practices to, to try and keep, uh, keep people away from food and, and so on and so forth. So that was maybe one of the, the first learnings that we had. And what we did at that point in time was we actually created a, what we called a, a control tower around COVID-19. And we, uh, we had a, it was, it was managed globally. But we had groups locally in different parts of the world who came to back, who came together to share best practice. And then we actually created those learnings. We put those learnings into a playbook and we uh, we created a playbook, which we actually shared with our customers, with our suppliers as well, so that we could we could help them uh, with, with any learnings that we might have had. And um, some of the other maybe quality issues that we had or faced. Uh, Things like, um, um, I suppose recently, maybe we've had some issues around um, things not turning up on time. When they do turn up, maybe they're slightly damaged, they've been held in, in a condition which wasn't quite right for it. Um, we've had manpower, uh, manpower issues where maybe there's been uh, some COVID, some people have tested positive for COVID and we've had to, to isolate people. Um, those were kind of the main things. Uh, unique raw materials, and uh, very difficult to get unique raw materials uh, together. People are prioritizing um, bigger parts of their business today. Um, so there was, there was numerous things, but I think overall we managed it pretty well. Um, we managed to keep our people safe first and foremost. We serviced our customers really, really well. And uh, some of the ways in which we actually some of the things which we implemented actually man we managed to increase the service to most of our customers um, once we got over the initial kind of shock of COVID-19. So, so it's all about it's all about taking the learnings in, uh, empowering teams of, uh, of people who are experts in their area and they will make the right decisions for you. Thank you so much, Marivino. Well, I love your company because you have put premium in your people. <laughs> Absolutely. Initially, of course, but if you have healthy people, then you are assured that there will be that they will be more productive in delivering their outputs. 100%. Now we have another question from VP. In your researches with Genzers, what are their inputs on sustainable nutrition? Yeah, so we we're actually doing a, a huge. We've done a lot of work, a lot of research on this in uh, in North America and in Europe, we're actually in the process of doing um, a research study in Asia. So hopefully within the next, uh, the next few months, we'll be able to give a lot more granular information about what it means for Asian consumers um, and what their thoughts are on sustainability and how nutrition plays a part in that. But what we're finding is that, is that Gen, Gen Zers at the moment, like what they're, they're more informed. So, they're looking, they, they associate their image with the products that they consume, okay? And because they're so digitally enabled and they want to Instagram everything and they want to put uh, things on social media, that means that the products which they associate themselves with, they want it to be good, right? So they want it to have a good, good appeal or a good image because it reflects upon them as, as consumers. Things like um, they're, they're better informed as well. So they'll be able to read the back of a packet and read an read a ingredient declaration on a food or a beverage. And they'll be able to understand what that is and what is in there. So we're, if there are, you know, 
too many ingredients in there, if there is a high sugar content, if there is uh, if there is something in there they don't understand or don't know where it comes from or comes up as being some way negative, um, that that is a huge turnoff uh, for Gen Zers. And they will very quickly share that. They will very quickly share it with their friends and their friends will share it with their friends and it will become viral. Um, there's been many instances of, of big food brands who have um, who have had, had issues around certain products or certain, certain things um, that have gone viral on social media. And it's a, it's a huge thing which uh, brands have to be aware of uh, in the new normal and, in, and today with Gen Zers because they're just way more informed. They have access to information and they can make decisions that, that uh, maybe other generations couldn't. And that being said, they still want all the benefits, as I explained. They still want to uh, have a great tasting product. You know, they still want the product to be uh, affordable. They still want the product to look good. They want it to. They want to be able to put it in their bag and and travel <laughs> with it. And so, on. so I mean, they're a lot more demanding, but that creates uh, that creates <laughs> opportunity for uh, that creates opportunity for brands and for, uh, for the industry to meet those challenges. Yes, you just have to embrace their uniqueness and differences. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Okay. Unfortunately, okay. I can't claim to be a Gen a Gen Z or so, uh, but anyway. <laughs> there is a question here from Air Fryer. Are part of uh, as part of Gen Z, what can we do to help in our simple ways on that goal of sustainable nutrition world? Oh uh, yeah. So, to be honest, as part of as part of Gen Z and creating the demand for these products is what's going to make the difference. Mm -hmm. um, we have a responsibility as individuals and a responsibility as as companies to look after our planet, to look after people, um, and to do things in a responsible and, and sustainable way. Um, I say for one, I have a son. I, I don't want him to look back and go, "What did my dad do to, uh, you know, to uh, destroy the planet I'm supposed to live on now?" And I think we all get very, um, um, I suppose, uh, emotional about that or whatever. And we can, we can, we we want to pass on a world which is actually livable for our future generations. That's for sure. And what you can do to help is to is to create the demand for more sustainable products. Um, you can now, I mean, the, the advances in things like packaging have been huge. Um, recyclable packaging, uh, sustainable, you know, packaging, packaging that uh, will um, disintegrate in a number of months as opposed to never. If there is a demand for these products and, and people buy them, then the investment goes into the technology to create the solutions. Um, and it's by by having that demand, by sharing and being positive about sustainable products or products which are are better for you in terms of nutrition. Um, that's what will make the difference ultimately. I agree. I agree, hundred percent. I agree absolutely. We all have to work together to ensure that the younger generation will have a better world. <laughs> exactly. Okay. From Michael, what are the best practices and key methodologies applied and implemented by Kerry in their processes to maintain the product quality and performance? Okay, I'm probably not best positioned to answer that question, to be honest. Um, um, we, have, uh, we have a whole quality team. Uh, so we have a global quality team, which is laid out, which, which we implement global standards across quality. So we work to the highest common denominator when it comes to quality um, for our systems and for our products. So it goes from everything right down to the sourcing of our materials, the uh, fabrication of our plants, the standard of the equipment that we use, the cleaning processes and sanitation processes which we have, the testing regimes in terms of shelf life and food safety. All of those things are controlled um globally and we work to the highest common uh, denominator when it comes to those standards um, those learnings then get fed back into 
get back. So there's obviously learnings as you implement things and you try new things and, and people will find new ways and to come up with, you know, better quality systems or, or uh, to improve the process. So continuous improvement, those get fed back in and then they get shared out with the relevant people who then take them on and implement them in their, in their plants. So it's really a whole, it's a whole quality system end to end. We have a, we have a, a, a kind of a, a slogan within our operations teams, which is safety first and quality always. And if you go around any of like any carry facility, you will, and you ask people about this, they will be able to tell you safety first, quality always, and they'll be able to tell you the things which are going on within our factories to um, increase the safety for our employees, for our customers, and also the quality standards um, for the products which we make. Wow, that's great. Thank you so much, Mervyn. This is a very productive one hour with you. And we are very pleased. We are very uh, excited. Of, we, are, we are very happy with all the learnings that, you have, that we got from you. And at this juncture, may we request, uh, once again, thank you very much. A virtual applause for our guest speaker. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank thank you, thank you, you so much. <laughs> at this juncture, may we request our participants, our PSQ Nation, the code, this one. Please scan this code, this QR code. Kindly scan this for the post-evaluation survey and consent form link. And at this juncture, may I present the certificate of appreciation to our resource speaker for imparting valuable insights and inspiration to the participants during the webinar Advancement and Recent Trends on Food Science, Technology, and Quality on September 24, 2021, signed by our president, Dr. Ray B. Fremista, the Philippine Society for Quality awards the certificate of appreciation to Mr. Mervyn Grimbin. Once again, thank you so much, Sir Mervyn. May I present to you now the Philippine Society for Quality's initiatives for 2021, for the rest of the 2021. This is already the uh, fourth quarter and true to, to our, true to our vision, PSQ is continuously providing relevant training and certification activities which are responsive to the needs of the industries. And we have invited renowned gurus throughout the years. We have partnered with different local and international organizations for collaborative projects, which will greatly benefit our members. And we also facilitate Fair quality is the highest national recognition for exemplary organizational performance of the, of, the, of the country. And we are again, once again, inviting everybody to please, please submit your articles for our first official publication, the PSQ Nation. We're still accepting until October 31st of, the, of October. And I'd like to take this opportunity to invite everybody and your companies and your networks to attend the training, the 32nd National Quality Forum with the theme Emerging Stronger Than Ever, Shaping the Future of Quality. This is, is later this coming October 15, 2021. And also please join, please join us for our first research conference on quality. This is in, this is in collaboration with National University Laguna. And, call, and we are accepting papers for different uh, categories. So please, if you're interested, please get in touch with our secretariat at PSQ, secretariat at psq.org.ph. And if you want to be part of us, please uh, visit the social media platforms of the Philippine Society for Quality and be a PSQ nation, be, be a part of us. And we are very much looking forward to see you again and the various activities laid down by the society. We have come now to the end of our webinar this afternoon, and thank you very much for all of you here, especially to our participants and to our research speaker. Hi, uh, Sir Gribin. This has been your host, Dr. Zandra Maningas, the Vice President for Philippine Quality Award Administration of the Philippine Society for Quality, saying thank you and see you again in the next webinar session. Happy Friday. Mm -hmm.